Indianapolis, Indiana. Known for the Indy 500, being the birthplace of Brendan Fraser and David Letterman, and the home of the Super Bowl 41 champion Colts, led by quarterback Peyton Manning. The town, whose nicknames include Circle City and the Crossroads of America, has added a new moniker to the list, the Eclipse Capital of the Midwest. For an entire weekend in April, Indiana's capital will host a series of events, all centered around one extraordinary show, taking place millions of miles up. Mark your calendars, America. A total solar eclipse is headed our way. Well, total, only if you're in Indiana or 14 other states. If you look at the path, it you know starts down in Austin, goes up through Dallas, all the way through Buffalo. But if you think about true Midwestern cities, uh, Cleveland is in the path, but Indianapolis is smack dab in the crossroads of America. And we are expecting 100,000 visitors at minimum to our city. Yes, on April 8th, thousands will converge on Indy as millions across the country will be able to look up and gaze as the sun, moon, and earth align in what's called syzygy. This eclipse is a solar eclipse where the sun is momentarily blocked by the moon. And uh, along this path is where you will actually see that. And not just see that action, but then af once the moon is completely covering the sun, it you will see the sun's outer corona or atmosphere. And uh, that's where our origins of space weather uh, come from. This is a rare event. It will only be the second time in seven years that the continental United States will experience a total solar eclipse, when the moon completely blocks the face of the sun, darkening the sky. In this path, there are 31.5 million people who live, who live in that path, and around 200 million um, who live within a few hours drive of that path. Um, and the entire continental United States, as well as parts of Alaska and Hawaii, will be seeing a partial eclipse. So that's about 300, over 300 million people will experience a part of this celestial event. And if you remember the total solar eclipse from 2017, same rules apply here. Don't look directly at it. And those rules apply to everyone. So you'll need solar viewing glasses or a handheld solar viewer to safely witness the eclipse to prevent eye damage. And thinking it's okay to look at it via your camera, telescope, or binoculars? Think again, you'll need solar filters to use those devices. But there is a time when it is safe to look directly at the sun without any eye protection, and that's during the brief total phase. During the totality itself, which can last up to four minutes in different parts of the US, um, you don't need the glasses. We can actually look at the sun for the, for the only time during the daytime, and you will see that beautiful coronal image that uh, Kelly just shared. However, before and after, as the moon is eclipsing the sun, in order to witness this event and to see these spectacular Bailey's beads that happen just as you see the craters of the moon, right as the moon is fully covering the sun, in order to appreciate all of that phenomenon, you need these glasses. Now, if you don't live in Indiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Maine, or any one of the 15 states in the 115 mile wide path of totality, you're not out of luck, because you may still be able to see a partial eclipse, where the moon covers most but not all of the sun, but you still need special glasses for that too. However, if you are determined to see the total solar eclipse, how about viewing it at 30,000 feet? Delta and Southwest are offering flights that pass through the path of totality. You may be asking, is there a demand for such a thing? You bet. Delta added a second path of totality flight after the first one sold out. Southwest, meanwhile, partnered with Omni Hotels for a celebration sweepstakes. The lucky winner flying on a plane predicted to be in the eclipse path and then staying in a custom-designed hotel room inspired by the celestial event. Out of this world. Businesses of all kinds are bringing the Eclipse experience to customers in different ways. Cleveland's Market Garden Brewery created a hazy IPA called the Totality. The Donut Dude in Ohio is offering an Eclipse special. Seven donuts that display the different phases as the moon blocks the sun. And fast food spots are getting in on the fun too, with Sonic Drive-In releasing a limited edition blackout slush float. Even better, you get a free pair of viewing glasses with purchase. Now back in Indianapolis, Claire Clark from Visit Indy touts the city is within half a day's drive to half of the nation's population, and they are preparing for eclipse enthusiasts from Cincinnati, 
St. Louis, Madison, Wisconsin, and other big cities to come and partake in their celebrations. If you want to kind of take in the eclipse in an arts and culture lens, you can go to Newfields, which is our 152 acre uh, museum. Astronomy fans who also enjoy sports can camp out at Indy's Motor Speedway, where NASA will be on hand to live stream the eclipse, along with the family of Purdue alumnus Neil Armstrong, the first person to walk on the moon. We're no stranger to hosting large scale events. The Indianapolis 500 is the single largest sporting day event that brings 300,000 people to the Motor Speedway every May. So this is what Indy does best. And so the, the community, our attractions, hotels, restaurants are all hands on deck. We have 50 plus events that we're just monitoring right now in the city and more events are being added daily. And Indy is not alone in turning the eclipse into a memorable experience for tourists, all hoping to see similar results to South Carolina in 2017, when that eclipse resulted in an economic impact of $269 million. The Lone Star State, a major viewing hotspot for this eclipse, is hosting multiple events, including the four-day Texas Eclipse Festival in Burnett. Moralton, Arkansas has an Eclipse concert series, and rising country music singer Dylan Marlowe is performing a post-Eclipse concert in Rochester, New York. The path of totality is certainly the place to be, Airbnb saying it's seen an increase of 1,000% in stays along the path, and Expedia reporting top cities are seeing massive spikes in hotel searches, up to 1,100%. And right there, in the top five, is that Eclipse capital of the Midwest, Indianapolis. The eclipse won't be coming through Indianapolis again until 2153. So this truly is a once in a lifetime opportunity and our proximity to all of those larger markets and how people can truly take a weekend or take a day trip to Indianapolis is what's making us really hopeful about the influx of visitors we're going to see on April 8th.